I want to say first, this is not intended as a humorous lightning talk. <laughs> okay, I'm talking about cute signals in the coroutines TS today. Who's a cute user here? Okay. Yeah. Good framework. I enjoy it a lot. Um, cute signals are a kind of generalized event, like timer expired, button press, packet received, all that kind of thing. They can have parameters that give you a little bit more information about what's happening. You connect them to slots. Slots are, have, are like functions that have the same signature as the signal does. They can be member functions, lambdas, whatever. You can, when you receive a signal, you can take further actions like updating variables. You can issue new signals yourself. You can do whatever you like. Sequencing logic, unfortunately, in the situation is a pain. Sometimes you want things to happen in a specific order. You have to respond to several signals in a row. They arrive, then you sort of return, and then another one arrives and you return. And so you have to sort of maintain a lot of state generally to, to, to get things right when you're sequencing things. For example, if you want to draw a line, you have a sequence of states going on, actually a very simple sequence. No points have been entered is one state. The other state is the first point is entered. And then when you get another point, then you're going to draw a line between the two points, the one that you already have and the one that you just received. Here's how that might look with conventional cute signals. Uh, this is a slot. I'm connecting a signal to a slot uh, based in a lambda where we receive a point. If I've already see received the first point, then I'm going to finish the line. And if I haven't received the first point yet, then I just store it and remember that I have the first point. This is a little bit awkward. What I really want to be able to say is, get the first point, get the second point, draw the line. That's it. I don't want to have all these extra state variables sitting around. But this is a classic use case for coroutines. This is the kind of code we want to write. We want to be able to say, I have the first point, I wait on this event, where I take a cute signal and I turn it into a coroutine awaitable. Then I have the second point as well, and then when I have those two things, then I draw the line. That's it. So using the coroutines TS to implement this. This is what we need for coroutines in general. We need a promise type, which is, at least the way I think about it, a handle for the creating code to hold on to, to the coroutine. We need an awaitable, which is kind of the right-hand side of the co-await statement. That awaitable has to handle connecting and disconnecting from the signal and marshalling the result of the co-await. A little bit about the code. First, metaprogramming stuff, which is terrifying to me. Co-await needs to produce uh, either void, so we just co-await and we don't do anything with the result, the, a single type, or a tuple of types, depending on the signature of the signal. The signal has two or more parameters. We want to produce a tuple of that many parameters. Uh, if it's just one type, we want, to, we want to return just the type. And if it doesn't have any parameters at all, we just want to return void. Is Arthur here? Thank you, Arthur. All right. It was very helpful. Um, a little bit of the code here. All I'm doing is when the awaitable is constructed, I'm actually performing the connection. I'm calling something called make slot, which has a bunch of metaprogramming backing it up. But make slot, uh, so, so we're, we're connecting the, the signal that we're, that we're constructing the awaitable signal on. Our awaitable is constructed based on a signal. And we're making a slot for it. And the make slot, the, the slot itself is just going to disconnect from the signal when the signal arrives. It's going to marshal the result. And then it's going to resume the original function. So here's our demo. The code I'm going to show right now is two coroutines. One takes one parameter, namely a point, whenever we click on the window. The other one takes no parameters at all. It's just running off of a timer, and it's changing the background color constantly. And if you're interested in this code, there's the, the URL shortener thing for it. OK, goodbye. Here we go. All right, now we're, we're si our signal, our single no, our, our no parameter signal is firing, changing the color on them based on a timer. And now I click once, I click twice, I get a line. So basically, that's two coroutines running out of the cute event loop. And that's all I have. Thank you.